Always as an artist, you're judged based on the body of work you've put out ultimately, but what people focus on is whatever you've done most recently. People have this like thing in their head now that we're just like invincible. I don't want to be fooled by that. I think the pressure is motivating. It's there, but I really try not to, to focus on it. I'm more comfortable when there's a lot to be expected. I think we're all deadline or pressure performers. I want to like be in the mix. Have the pressure. It ain't no thing but a chicken wing. It's a piece of cake. The writing process, I think that we got started pretty early. I think we started like nine months before we actually started doing the album. That was really helpful because it took us a few months to get some of this garbage out of our system, you know? Like, it's like sophomore album garbage. Right, I wrote some, we wrote some terrible stuff, some really dumb songs. You gotta put your helmet on before you come back here because there's like a lot of construction going on. Like you saw on the DVD, we worked on the bus. Mike and I would just mess around with different ideas and, and a lot of times we'd write music that isn't even necessarily Lincoln Park oriented. <laughs> we came with a lot of stuff there. I think that we came up with some really cool guitar stuff and a lot of good samples. Mike's always involved in all the songs because he's built kind of like the glue in that he knows how to use the Pro Tools rig and he's really good at working with people one on one in terms of putting their parts down. Just drag it out, remember. And when we write songs, we're not really a jam band. We won't sit there together and just like jam on our instruments and, and say, hey, that sounded cool, play it again, and we'll try and like all write stuff together. I think we would kill each other if we tried to do that. Somebody will start a song, come up with like a guitar riff, and then it can get passed on to the next person where they can take it and put it on their computer and sit there and write something to it. We record all the songs as demos before we actually go into the studio. So we actually have basically finished versions of the songs before we even start recording. For me, as a producer working with artists like Lincoln Park, that really want their music to be as good as it can be. We'll rip a song to shreds and then build it back up and then rip it down again if that's what it takes. I'm gonna rock the mullet. Today is the first day of recording here at NRG. We're about to start the new album. We all decided to have a mullet contest. Rob and I decided that we would uh, make today our, our big our big finale, our grand finale. A couple of the other guys bailed out early. A couple of the other guys are going to wait till the end of the the uh, album cycle. So uh, today we're going to walk into NRG and we're going to start recording and uh, show them our new our new look, our new image. I'm sure, they'll be feeling that. That's hot hair, dude. I love the hair. Gotta keep it real. This is, this is NRG. This is where we record a hybrid theory. We're gonna record another record here. 311, Peter Roach, Sugar Ray, Hootie and the Blowfish. And when we heard that Hootie and the Blowfish did their record here, that was the reason we came to NRG. Did you see that? 12 million copies. Uh oh, the mullets are here. Howdy! <laughs> Dude, we got these sideburns right here. <laughs> a lot of thought went into it. <laughs> Blood, there. sweat, and tears. Yeah. These yeah. were like like five months in the making, I'm telling you. you guys nice t shirts, too. Yeah, you know, this really this worked out just last night. I was very excited about this. It's got air conditioning, too. Yeah, it's yeah. got air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to go into the studio now and, and uh, get started. Get we're working. Just... Right before I went to the studio, I was spending probably eight to ten hours a day practicing, almost seven days a week. I had dreams about drums. I, I had dreams about drum fills that like I practiced the day before and I couldn't get right. It was just constant like drum craziness. Right now we're down at my rehearsal space. This is my drum set. It is a five-piece Gretsch. I have Zildjian cymbals, Gibraltar hardware, and I have Vader drumsticks. I also have triggers on my kit. All the sampled sounds that you hear on the album come out through these triggers. Right now I'm working on adding some new stuff to the kit. I just made a new space here for an 18-inch floor tom. It's a huge tom that's going to go right here, and when I hit it, it's going to shake the floor. Every time I come into the studio, I take off my other shoes and I put on my drumming shoes. They're actually modeled after race car driving shoes. You can really feel the pedals and everything, and it gives a lot more control. Back here, 
I got a Pro Tools rig. I'm able to record all of my drums right here onto the hard disk of my computer. That's something that's really different for this album. When I did all the drums for Hybrid Theory, I had a four track and a room mic taped to the ceiling. This time, I was able to use the computer to help come up with drum parts. This is the kick drum right here, so you'll be able to hear every time a kick hits. And this is the stair, and this is the high up. You can see right here, this is the high up building. It's going from a verse part into a chorus. So let's say, for instance, I didn't like these two kick parts right here, and I wanted to get rid of them before that fill, because I want these snares to be by themselves. I can just highlight those and delete them so they wouldn't play anymore in that pattern. No more kick drums. It really saves a lot of time. Because if I come up with an idea or I think something might sound good and I don't know how to play it yet, instead of having to practice for two hours to try and figure something out, I can just cut it and, and put it together here and listen to it and see if it sounds good. And if it doesn't sound good, I just save myself two hours of having to practice and learn that. I think some people don't like that about it. I think it takes the musicianship out of writing music. I think it opens the door for a whole other world. But everything I have here is really only done for scratch tracks. It's only for writing purposes and practicing purposes here. The sound that you hear on the album is all created at NRG Studios. We set up Rob in the room uh, and it'll stay that way for as long as we can keep it in there. Uh, without without making noise for the other instruments. We have like full tracks kind of going through, like rough tracks going through his headphones and through the speakers as he's playing. From hybrid theory to where he is now is two completely different people. The preparation he put into this record was, was unbelievable, and it, and it shows. He's really fast, because he's really tight. The last couple times we went into studios to record, he only took three days, four days. This time, I'm figuring probably about four or five. Our songs are on the average 39% scratching. Here you can see we like to build little forts. Uh, that's actually the vocal fort. Alright, what's the vision here? The best mullet ever. 